All right, let's move on to Ukraine. Uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Europe right now. He's been talking to NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg, and this is what he had to say. He says Ukraine is going to be joining NATO. Here it is. Support for Ukraine, the determination of every country represented here uh, at NATO uh, remains rock solid. Uh, we uh, will do everything that we can. Allies will do everything that they can to ensure that Ukraine has what it needs to continue to deal with Russia's ongoing aggression against Ukraine, an aggression that gets worse uh, with every passing uh, uh, day. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership uh, and uh, to create a clear pathway for, uh, for Ukraine uh, moving forward. So, uh, of course, we believe that Ukraine deserves to be a member of NATO and that this should happen sooner rather sooner sooner rather than later. Oh yeah, so easy to say. Sooner rather than later as they're in war now. Now just imagine this from Ukraine's perspective for a second. What a slap in the face. What an insult. Why is Ukraine still believing in this crap? This is not the first time that they've said, oh yes, Ukraine will be in NATO. Ukraine will be in NATO. They were saying this back in 2008. Here's the Guardian. This was back in 2008. Bush backs Ukraine and Georgia for NATO membership, right? Um, okay. Well, it's been now 16 years. Um, here was then, uh, this was in 2018. So said again, 10 years later, NATO officially gives Ukraine aspiring member status. Membership action plan is next ambition. So they've been making these promises to Ukraine for 16 years, if not longer than that, but officially for at least 16 years. And every time they say to you, oh, yes, yes, you will be a member of NATO, you will be a member of NATO, as they have then welcomed other countries into the fold, and they've left Ukraine out in the cold, and now Ukraine is at war. Why do you even need to be in a, what's the point of being a member of NATO? The point is, if you then end up invaded, you end up at war, that these other countries would join in and help defend you and your borders, right? Okay. So, yeah, that's Ukraine right now. Why would they need to join NATO in the future when the war is over? Are they worried that they're going to be invaded by Russia again after this war is? And when will this war end? This war isn't going to end because there's no way that Ukraine is going to be able to kick Russia out of the entire territory of Ukraine, of what Ukraine believes is Ukraine, what the West believes is Ukraine. There's no way they're going to kick Russia out. So what they're going to do is Russia's going to annex the areas that Russia's already annexed. They might gain a little bit more land. Uh, Russia, I think, is there trying to get Ukraine to back down eventually, which they're not doing, especially as NATO also announced during this meeting with uh, Antony Blinken that they're planning on creating a hundred billion dollar euro fund for Ukraine. So they're not giving up on this war. They're not pushing forward for peace talks. Many of us thought a few months ago that when it was obvious that this war was just really not going to go the way the West wanted, we really thought that they would start pushing for peace talks. There, were, there was chatter about it, pushing for peace talks. And now they're ramping up in the other direction and saying, no, no, no peace talks. We're going to do a hundred billion dollar euro fund for Ukraine as Europeans are crump, their middle class is crumpling. They've got skyrocketing utilities, gas utilities, especially since they've been cutting off Russia and blowing up pipelines. They've got um, food prices are on the rise in Europe. They've got all these problems in Europe, but they're going to give $100 billion to Ukraine to fight a war that they cannot win and a war that's likely going to last probably 20 years. I would imagine it's going to be like Afghanistan, where they're just going to have this uh, Russia holds certain areas for decades. Ukraine doesn't ever concede. They continue to claim that they're at war with one another when in reality there's very little fighting. There's nothing, you know, it, it will drag it on. It'll be kind of one of these stalemate wars, sort of like North Korea and South Korea, right? So it'll kind of end up like that, maybe a little bit more intense than that. Um, and so they're going to be for, they're going to be in this war for decades. So there's no way they can join NATO while they're in a war. So this is just posturing. It's just crap. It's why, when is Ukraine going to pull its head out and realize that the West is not your friend. They're not helping you. When it mattered for you and when you were actually invaded after 16 years of chatter of talking about being in NATO, they were not there for you. They did not show up. The French are talking about showing up. The, West of, the, the rest of the Western countries are saying, don't you dare send any troops in there. France is like, it's just a few. Russia has come back and said about that, 
saying, oh, you know, I mean, if they send a few, they send a few. It's not going to be it's not going to really do anything. There's going to be um, a few more caskets. That's what Russia pretty much just said. So uh, they're not intimidated by that. The world is worried that France will pull us into a greater war. But Russia doesn't seem to be interested in that either. From what they're saying about French troops being over there. So I, I suppose that's a good thing. Uh, but, you know, when is Ukraine going to realize that this is all just chatter? They're not going to let you in while you're in war. They can't. That's against the rules of NATO. And you're going to be in this war for 20 years at the rate you're going unless you actually come to a peaceful negotiation working with Russia, the country that's on your borders, the country that's actually sharing a people with you. And then Ukraine goes and lowers the conscription age in Ukraine. So they're going to throw younger men into the into the military. Uh, and they so so they're not going to have any young uh, fertile men in Ukraine, all the fertile young Ukrainian men are going to be very few and far between. And so guess what the Ukrainian women are going to do? They're not going to go marry some Brit. That's not what these Ukrainian women are going to do. They're in Ukraine. They're going to marry a Russian. And then the Russians are going to end up taking over more of Ukraine just through, just by genetics. I mean, they're just going to be going in there and the kids will be more Russian because their dad's Russian and mom's Ukrainian. They're speaking Russian. And most of the Ukrainians I know, of course, I don't know very many, but the ones I do know identify as Russian. They speak Russian. They're, they, they were born and raised in the USSR. They feel Russian and Ukrainian. They feel both. They feel loyalty to, you know, they, they feel ethnically Russian and, and nationally Ukrainian. And they might even be pro what's going on, you know, pro Ukraine in this war. But they're still, you know, at the end of the day, they're still Russian speaking people, ethnically Russian, and they're mixing and marrying and hanging out with Russians from Russia, not just Ukrainians. It's a very mixed group of people that are very much intertwined. They are related in and literally, not only just figuratively. So I, I don't know what Ukraine is doing, but this is just insane that NATO continues to say, we're going to give you $100 billion. We're going to let you into NATO one day, another false promise. And uh, yeah, keep fighting. Keep fighting those Russians. Because we're afraid that if you don't fight them there, they're going to, well, look, they're not, they're, they know Russia's not going to expand beyond Ukraine. Russia's made that very clear. They know that Russia's made it clear that this is an inner family fight to the Russians. They view this as a family fight. They don't view this as expanding outside of their family. This is their family. That's how they look at it. And they say, we're not interested in the rest of you. This is between us. Uh, let us be with that. And um, so th this isn't even about stopping Russian expansion or Russian aggression. This is really, truly just about debilit trying to debilitate Russia from, their, from growing economically, from strengthening their geopolitical position, from uh, growing a multipolar world, especially now that Russia's joined forces with China. That was the big mistake. Had the United States embraced Russia after the Cold War, Maybe, uh, undoubtedly, Russia would have sided with the West and would have embraced the West because they are more like the West, uh, culturally, religiously, uh, even looks-wise. They are more like the West than they are the East, and they would have they would have done that embrace, but they didn't. And now, the U.S. Is, and the West are trying to do everything they can to stop the rise of the multipolar world, which is there's no stopping it. There's no stopping at this point, but they can sure try, can't they? That's what they're attempting to do. But I just wonder when Ukraine, you know, when I see this, when is Ukraine going to just realize, like, these are the popular kids that they keep saying, yeah, one day you'll be part of a, yeah, we'll invite you to the party. <laughs> yeah, you know, we 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 planned, oh, sorry, you, you, we, we didn't invite you to the last one. Uh, something came up, you know, it just wasn't the right fit. But soon, in the future, I promise you, we're, we're totally going to do my homework, do my homework. That's kind of what they're saying here.